Welcome to Sculpture Studios. Something for the home, madam? Well, here in this project, we're creating a bespoke piece of fireplace sculpture commissioned by Walter Wagner for a client in London. Now, for the purposes of this video, the client's going to be known as Mrs. S, and we've been contacted with a couple of reference images of an existing stone type fireplace surround. Mrs. S was inspired by this gargoyle look and drew her own version that she'd like to be created. This isn't going to be an architectural piece, but more of a personalised art installation. Part of the brief is to stick exactly to the client's drawing so that it really is her design, and this means it's not going to be perfectly symmetrical, and it isn't really something that's open to interpretation. Aiden's using a plasticine here to create a model to bridge the gap between a 2D design and a fully formed 3D sculpture. Once this maquette has been confirmed with the client, we can start scaling up onto our large blocks of polystyrene. As our billets come in sizes of 8 by 4 by 2 foot thick, and the total width of the gargoyle face exceeds that 4 foot, we're joining two blocks together using a polyurethane expanding foam. Notoriously sticky and a nightmare to get off your hands and clothes, this needs to be carefully applied, and the blocks are then left for an hour or so to properly join together. Here, Jess is sketching out the client's design, scaling up from the smaller gridded model. We're going to be getting the handheld hot wire out to first cut the peripheral shape around the edge, and we're weighting one of the handles of the hot wire so we can simply use gravity and one person to create a nice even cut all the way round. Aiden's using the hot wire here to create the basic form of the sculpture. This does take a practice set of hands, as any big mistakes will take time to rectify by re-adding the material again, and remember, as soon as you cut that front surface of the foam off, you no longer have that sketched image to follow, so that's why these initial cuts are always very important to get right. Something quite therapeutic, like slicing through cheese with a hot cheese cutter, is an enjoyable part of the process for the boss himself. Carving is one of the aspects that Aidan likes most in the studio, and no doubt he'd be doing this sort of thing all day, every day, if he could. Once he's happy with the rudimentary shape, he goes to work with nail and wire brushes to refine the form. Working down to sandpapers to smoothen the shape and lose that loose polystyrene bead texture, Aiden then works on some of the finer details using a stonemason riffler. Once Aiden's happy with the form, it's time to send a couple of progress photographs to the client. This is to gain approval for the master carving before we proceed with any glass fibre work. Originally, when we were first approached with the project, we quoted for a waste plaster mould. There's only going to be one of these after all, so naturally a waste mould is the cost effective option, but now that we have the full form in front of us, we were contemplating how well the plaster mould would release from the master pattern, and in the same vein, how easily the fiberglass cast would then release from the mould. If anything went wrong during the plaster stage, as this would be a huge piece of plaster, something cracks or the master pattern were to be damaged underneath, we wouldn't have time to recarve. So, to save falling behind schedule in any way, and for the purpose of protecting the master pattern as much as possible, we're going for a blanket coat option and spending time working up the surface. 
This works out to be more labour intensive for us, but it was the best move for the most risk free method of creating the finished cast and we're still honouring our original price. We've now gone on with a layer of our secretly sourced sticky back tinfoil and this provides a protective barrier between the polystyrene and the resin that's going on top. As this is literally going to be a fireplace surround and it's more than likely real fire will be used inside, it's probably the project where it's most imperative to use a fire retardant resin. Anything we create to go indoors with a captive audience, we normally create using a class O resin as standard, but it's particularly important in this case. Now that the fiberglass is completely set, we're going to be removing the master pattern from the inside. This is done for numerous reasons, one, so that the foam, even though it's fire rated, doesn't have to sit too close to the heat and the naked flame, two, removing the poly keeps the weight down, so when this is hung on the wall, the brackets are carrying a lighter load, uh, yeah, let's not sugarcoat it, there's no other way to get this out, and three, so that we can easily install metalwork into the reverse side of the sculpture. As the fiberglass blanket coat is naturally left in a raw fibrous state, we've gone over with a flow coat of resin and sanded this back to lose the majority of the initial texture. We then repeat the process of using car body fillers and sanding this back over and over until we have the finish we're after. Mrs S has asked for this to resemble a smooth white marble, which means we need to give this enough attention to achieve her desired finish. Once we're nearing what we think is completion, we go over with a layer of primer and this helps to show up any imperfections that still need a little more TLC. On the reverse side of the sculpture, metal strips are being installed, by which we're sending the client a template. This is so they have an accurate guide as to where to place their fixings at the other end prior to the sculpture being offered up against the wall. Obviously, this will only be seen from the front once it's in position on the wall but the client will undoubtedly see the back, as well as anyone installing this for the first time, and anyone that might move this in the future, so we're making sure that we finish a nice clean job over the entire form inside and out. For the artwork, we're using a water-based eggshell paint for a more ceramic finish, and this works out to be a lot tougher than regular water-based emulsions, and in place of our usual car body paints, which would be flammable. In terms of the white marble look, what we're going to do is have this transported to site, and Aiden's going to go through the airbrush work with the client. This is only going to be a very subtle grey vein running through the stone, and so that Mrs S can add her own personalised finish and touch. The installation went ahead with no problems, the template of the metal work was installed perfectly, and the client was extremely happy with the piece at the end of the day, which for us is what it's all about. We'd like to thank Luke Hamlin for the initial contact in the project, and Chris Windsor from Walton Wagner. A big thank you must go to Mrs S also, for choosing such an interesting piece for us to create and showcase on our portfolio. Please feel free to leave any comments below, as they're always appreciated, and hit the subscribe button for our latest videos. You can like Sculpture Studios on Facebook, and follow at Aidan Hines on Twitter, and for more of our work, visit sculpturestudios.co.uk. Thank you very much for watching.